It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, they're both here. We'll talk about Windows 8 Consumer Preview one week in, what news was announced at Barcelona for the Windows Phone, and their review of uh, the iPad, the new iPad, what it all means. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 251, recorded March 8th, 2012. It's a server, not a surfboard. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to My PC. Go to My PC apps are the missing link for remote access to turn your iPad and iPhone into your office computer. Visit gotomypc.com for your free 30-day trial. Use the offer code WINDOWS. And by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic, continuous, unlimited backup for your computer files. Just $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com. Use the offer code WINDOWS to get two bonus months with purchase. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 30% off your new account for three months, go to Squarespace.com. Use the offer code WINDOWS3. It's time for Windows Weekly, and look a uh, look a here, look a here. We've got two experts in Windows. Isn't that coincidental? Just sitting right here on our panel, waiting to talk about all the latest and greatest. Starting, of course, with the man who's been doing this show since before the beginning, Mr. Paul Therott, wow. editor. I'm like part of the protoplasm of you podcasting. are. <laughs> you are. You are older than dirt. No, you're not. If you're older than dirt, that makes me like a dinosaur. <laughs> Paul is the editor in chief of the Win Super Site, Super Site for Windows. Uh, he's also the uh, news editor for Windows I2 Pro, the author offer of I'm saying ha 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 many great books, including <laughs> Windows Something Secrets. You plug, you know, it could be Vista, could be Seven, could be Phone, Just could be Eight, Windows N Secrets, it, Eight, it, all of the above. That's him. Also joining us from allaboutmicrosoft.com, the ZDNet Microsoft blog, and really a prolific blogger and uh, insider at uh, Microsoft, and they're really trying to get her outside, Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing their best. They're doing their best <laughs> to uh, expurgate. Good to have you uh, both. Welcome. Um, of course, this is it's always tough doing this show the day after a Big Apple announcement because we don't really want to say anything about it because uh, who cares? But I think it's somewhat germane. I mean, here we are uh, a week ago. We even said this. Apple, of course, timed their announcement to take some of the steam, out, wind out of the sails uh, of, for Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Here we are uh, a week later. Uh, is is the drum beat the, 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 is, is the world moved on is the new cycle over or is the drum beat it's it's pretty positive i i like windows 8 consumer preview a lot more than i liked uh, the developer preview yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's no contest i mean I, I obviously you don't have to look too far to find some the, you know, the typical negative you know type right. reviews and and commentaries and so forth but i honestly most of what I've seen has been very positive, and we've lapsed in kind of, into kind of a nice how-to phase where right. people are coming to grips with it, and now we're sharing advice on uh, you know how we can do different things. So, right. In fact, I just saw that Microsoft posted something to the uh, Building Windows 8 blog that explains how to navigate around Windows 8. You know, which would have been helpful like ten days ago, but yeah. whatever. You know, that's, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you mean all those keystroke combos that you were talking about? Yeah. Ah, yeah. I would have loved that a little earlier. Yeah, no, it's okay. It gave it gave other people, including myself, uh, you know, some time to write similar and uh, <clears throat> superior articles to theirs that uh, <laughs> you know go into go into even more detail. Oh, look, before. they blacked you out, right? There. Microsoft shut me right <laughs> down. You know, it happens that Paul is in fact running uh, on Windows eight right now. You love living on the cutting edge. You've done this. I, you did this last yeah. time with Windows seven. Yep. You're in yep. the beta, and it seems to be working fine. You're using Skype there, right? Yeah, as you can see, Skype is working perfectly on Windows 8. Um, <laughs> well, as perfectly as it ever was. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Uh, where is that? Yeah, uh, where is that uh, blog post on on uh, Keystroke? Building Windows 8 blog. Oh, the Keystroke one is on my site. You'd have to. Um, All right, I, I would search for it at, at yeah, this yeah. point. It's because yeah. you'd have to go to the Windows 8 page, and it's probably two pages in now because I've written so much about Windows 8. But yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah and, when does a keyboard shortcuts? The other thing, as you say in your notes, it, it was fully expected, which is that the hardcore power users, the the people who you still use a command line, are whining because they don't like Metro and they don't mm -hmm. want to have to use Metro. But that was uh, to be expected. In some ways, uh, I, I think you know one of the spins uh, I, I put on this is you have to admire Microsoft when they said we're going to reimagine Windows. Uh, they really yeah. did. They and weren't kidding. Yeah, they weren't kidding. <laughs> no. And that's always sure. risky. In fact, that's one thing that's held Microsoft back for many generations is this yep. unwillingness to leave behind legacy. Um, I think they should have. They could have gone even farther. They still have the desktop, but well, I think they're clearly pushing. I, but they in that can't. Direction. I actually, they can't. I mean, I think given the confines of what they can do, this is further than anything yes. I, I ever expected. I and agree. you and I, Leo, had this discussion years ago. Um, I one of my big disappointments about the reception that Windows Vista got was simply that I felt it would harm Microsoft, i.e. like mm. the psyche of Microsoft, mm -hmm. the, the people on the Windows team, such mm -hmm. that it would take them a couple of Windows versions at least right. before they started getting their mojo back and, and would try to do something exciting and new again. And here we are two versions later, and they're already doing it again. So right. uh, that's great. I'm glad to have been wrong about that because that was a big fear that we would see these kind of tentative evolutionary updates uh, over and over again. Right. And so that's not happened. That's good. Plus, you know, we're saying, oh, maybe they didn't go far enough. You know, they should have gone further. But I got to tell you, I'm just going to speak to the business users again here. They think they went really far. I and, think they did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they're, they're already like freaking out about, oh, man, how much training am I going to have to do for my employees? Like when they come in and see this screen, suddenly it's going to be like, oh, freak out time. Right. right so, right. Uh, they, uh, you know, they couldn't they couldn't abandon all those business and and other users who have legacy apps. They, there's 1.3 billion Windows PCs out there. They couldn't just come in and go, here, guys, here, here it is, and forget it. We're not going to support it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah they're, not, they're not Apple. They can't do that. They just can't do it. Yeah. So Actually, increasingly, Apple can't do it either. I mean, I think once right. you get to a, a gigantic audience, you really, you know, doing the big stuff becomes very hard. It has been a while so I, since we've seen a big uh, uh, kind of renovation of the uh, of the desktop of the operating system. Uh, I would argue that this is the biggest change they've ever made to Windows. Actually, I, I mean, was trying I, I to really... think maybe Windows ninety five, but no, even well. So than here, that. here's the difference. You know, Windows ninety five obviously they consolidated a lot of the previous uh, manager type applications into a single kind of cohesive desktop interface that we've been using ever since. But you know, the interesting thing about the move to thirty two bits with Windows was that even though things change under the covers from a developer standpoint. They created this Win32 uh, Win API that worked just like the previous Windows API, which they retroactively named Win16. So the developer path going to Win32 was just simple. I mean, it was basically the same APIs, flat memory model, very simple. So this time around, they're changing the UI, but also the underlying runtime engine and all of those programmer SDKs and APIs and everything. Everything is different, right? I mean, it's based on... Uh, .NET stuff that they did before semant uh, semantically and, and, and has similarities with, uh, you know, Silverlight and, and WPF and so forth. But ultimately, this is a brand new thing. And I think that those things combined is what makes this really the most uh, aggressive uh, thing that they've ever done to Windows. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think in the long run, business uh, – well, you tell me, Mary Jo, because you have your finger on the pulse of business uh, – might come to say, oh, you know, this is so much easier for 80% of our users that we'll put up with them whining from the sysadmins and the other 20% um, because uh, it is easier to use for everybody else. You think that's possible? Yeah. You know, I, I'm not really hearing only, I won't, I won't call it whining because I actually think there's some legitimate right. criticisms here. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's not just people who are worried about like their everyday users coming in and saying, oh, wow, the UI is different. It's, it's also businesses who at least feel like they should have been given a choice about, yeah. you know, can I set up my group policy to boot so that we can skip Metro if we don't really have a need to go to it? And it's looking like that's not going to be allowable. And so it's those kind of things more that I, I'm hearing from my readers as why can't we just have, you know, something like that? That wouldn't take anything away from Metro yeah. and how they're trying to change the operating system. And that's where Microsoft's being a little courageous and saying, well, you know, we really... Yeah. They did this, uh, you know, I can think of other times when Microsoft did this, when they did, when they locked the kernel in uh, Windows Vista 64 and kind of sent a signal saying, you know, yeah. you're not going to be able to modify the kernel anymore. We're not going to force you into this, but... 
go, you know, and it's going to generation. It's going to happen, and it kind of feels like that. Where Microsoft is strongly urging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, look much like a mafia don. My yeah, strongly, I strongly urge, yeah. urge you to consider. I, I think, I, look, I, I, I'm working on a book about Windows 8. I'm, I'm almost done writing the desktop chapter. One of the things that stands out to me as I think about this stuff is that even for those people who say, "Look, I'm a power user, a desktop user, a, a creative person who needs to use Photoshop, whatever it is," there's, there are many scenarios in which people are basically going to spend the day sitting in the desktop environment. The, the tendrils of Metro, if you will, and, and sort of evidence that Metro is really the, the operating system are all over the desktop as well. You know, you get the switcher task switching interface. You get that smart tip is there, which is Metro based. You get the back stack functionality, the charms, you know, the settings interface, the notifications. I mean, all of these things come in over the desktop. You know, they're constantly reminding you that the desktop is not it. So even if you stick with the desktop, as I think many people will, I think that these things give you those baby step ways to kind of get used to the Metro stuff and that possibly by, you know, say the next version of Windows, the transition will be easier because there'll be more improvements on the full screen Metro experience and all that stuff where maybe that becomes more accessible and acceptable to, you know, business users, power users, creative users, whatever they are. Well, I'd also point out that uh, probably nowadays uh, people spend more time in the browser than anywhere else. And Explorer mm -hmm. has a very Metro feel to it. So they're going to kind of get used to being in Metro just by virtue of the fact that they live in Explorer. Um, Although you could you could go to the Explorer that's on the desktop. I don't mean, uh, uh, I don't mean, exp I mean, Internet Explorer. Oh, you, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, I mean, yeah. Internet Explorer. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so you so can there's use like it. There's a desktop a version of it as well. Yeah, there's both. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So you don't have and that's because plugins on x86-based machines, plugins can work on the Internet Explorer that's on the desktop, but they can't work on the Metro uh, style. Which yeah. is itself fascinating when you think about it, because that's it another is. way to say that is it is that way because arbitrarily it is that way. You know, in other words, you know, Microsoft <laughs> has almost arbitrarily decided that the Metro version of Internet Explorer is not going to support these things. So you have to use the desktop right. version. Does um, it it's have also, something to do with the full screen nature of it, maybe? Or I mean, it is. Well, no, I, I think it's, it has to do with the possibility of someone writing a bad ad in that could be used ah. to usurp Metro and, right. and inject code and, right. and do bad things. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think they they have a basic contract with users in this release where these things are going to be safe. Right. You know, right? And I think that's the point. And even, it's also even about to performance point, too, right, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all that stuff. I mean, right. performance, yeah, reliability, battery life, right. all right. of it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yes, and because you could possibly have a uh, an add-in is essentially another process running within a process or next to a process, and that usurps that model. Where uh, aside from the side-by-side -side multitasking feature, that these things are designed to run full screen, and that has implications across the board for reliability, performance, battery life, and so on. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's similar to the approach the server guys took many many years ago. Remember, they they added that uh, Internet Explorer mode. In I think 2003, where uh, by default you can't actually browse the web. You know, you have to go back and really screw around with it to get it to work. And the reason they did that, in their words, was that it's a server, not a surfboard. And uh, they knew, <laughs> you know, they knew that that was one way to get bad code into the system, right? So uh, they did a lot to lock down the system. It was part of that work they did for SP2. Uh, uh, well, so by the way, in in, in uh, modern versions of server, I, I, I coined my own phrase, which is. It's a server, period, right? I mean, they have server modes now where they've gotten rid of Internet Explorer and, and other UIs um, where it's just a server. You know, the world words, you is moving there. in the opposite direction, I might point out, but all right. Okay, but the point is that you take that philosophy to, to its logical extreme on the client and you're like, look, even though it's going to impact what some would say the functionality of the product, uh, the decision is always towards better reliability, better right. performance, well, that's better true. security. Yes. Yeah, well, but it's a that's a pretty fundamental thing. Hmm. So, hmm. and it's very, I would say, it has been formalized in this metro environment because now it's enforced. I mean, right. it's, it's they're very serious about it. Right, right, right. You know, the one one thing I got to say about see, kind of watching all the feedback coming in over Twitter, email, and all about the consumer preview that makes me a little bit concerned is I've seen a lot of people like shouting down people who have objections to the way things are in this in this consumer preview you know like you know yep. come on just accept it you you can't say you don't like it it has to be like this and you know <laughs> the, right 
I mean, the whole purpose of a beta used to be to see what users liked and didn't like. And, you know, with this consumer preview, I think we need to think about what Microsoft's doing here that's different. So they're not letting right. you really submit bugs, right? So By the way, there's it's no not a real it's mechanism not a here. It's not <laughs> Dude, a beta. You have to and think so, that you know, was I'm part getting, of the rationale. It was. You know? It was. So I'm getting a lot of email from people going, could you please tell them to do this? Like, okay, exactly. like first that I could tell them to do anything. Oh, Mary Jo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually send, I, I send Mary Jo emails like that myself. <laughs> oh, Mary Jo, the next time you you're talking to Steve, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next time you guys are having coffee, would you just mention? Yeah, next time we're chatting over lunch, um, I'll tell them that. But, you know, I think, I think it's kind of a, a two-headed coin here. It's like, okay, you can't really submit bugs and things aren't really going to change for the most part. There are going to be some minor tweaks between now and the release candidate, but not a lot. So you you kind of have to accept the way it is. But at the same time, well, I feel it, like it's... the Windows community needs to also say, you know, let's not shout over these people who don't like certain things because they have a legitimate point and maybe all their gripes will have a little bit of impact. Yeah, well, That's would, the question. Would, is would, Microsoft would, uh, listening? I mean, it's a beta. Are they listening to beta feedback at all? Or they, is just, they are, but certain kinds of beta feedback. I, I, to, just to, <laughs> Stuff we just like. To, well, to, just to, to nuance what you said a little bit, I guess the way I would say it is that um, there, there are too many people who are complaining about things that are not important. And, I, and what I mean by that is not just things that aren't going to change. I, I do think there, there needs to be an understanding up front. Like, look, the big picture stuff is not going to change. But Yeah, don't there, write an article about how Microsoft has to abandon Metro. Right, that's, that's not going to happen. That's, that's not going to happen, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, rightly and, or wrongly. Uh, and my, my own attempts in that, I, the, the, the time at which you were going to impact some of the core stuff, if at all, would have been between the developer preview and the consumer preview. With the consumer preview, they've very specifically gone into those app previews, which are, which are the least far along of Windows 8, and put feedback mechanisms in those apps only, which is should be an indication to everyone is that that's where they want you to focus. The core stuff, uh, the two UIs, the Metro UI and the desktop, and the way that they interact, that stuff's not changing. They're not moving the start button. They're not uh, we're putting it back. They're not moving shutdown. You know, that... That types of stuff is just not important. And when you complain about stuff like that, about how it's a further of a mouse travel or, more, you know, what you, you're just sort of generating noise. You know, And one of the things I had wanted to focus on much later was some of the big picture stuff. But I felt like because of the amount of noise, I sort of had to address that. And this week I wrote an editorial where I said, look, I mean, I think the fundamental question to Windows 8 when it comes down to it is whether the dual nature of their of the UIs they have here makes any sense at all. I mean, it is in some ways kind of a crazy Frankenstein-like melding of two, what could have been two completely different things, right? It's not hard to imagine Microsoft going the device route and, and just putting Metro on something and having it be something that's not called Windows, right? Uh, they didn't do that. And so we well, can... But they did do that but with Windows Phone. And, and then they said, and... Get ready because right. here it comes everywhere. But it well, started so on the actually, device, right. right? So, by the way, I, 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 <laughs> it's worth noting, and this is in my in the thing I wrote that the editorial I wrote that you know, there was a group at Microsoft that really wanted that to be the route that Microsoft went. They wanted Servalite on top of Windows. They wanted right. something that looked a lot like Windows Phone. And when Windows Phone became its own thing, they wanted Windows Phone to be the thing that was on tablets, not this big blown you know huge thing Windows. And uh, they lost. And so, you know, th those debates that we have now out in the world are the same debates that Microsoft had internally, but right. they probably had them years ago. And they don't want to uh, hear it at this point. Cause <laughs> well, the, if, who won, won. I mean, that's I can't, a battle can't that's change, been fought. Yeah. Yeah, we can't, we can't change the fact that they won. We also can't change the fact, by the way, that, um, and I think it's helpful to remember, uh, Windows Phone hasn't exactly taken off in a meaningful way in the marketplace at all. And neither has a lot of their other initiatives that were not Windows, uh, Zoom you know, Bing, whatever. I mean, so uh, there's no reason to think that like a Windows Phone tablet would suddenly have been the magic sauce that made this thing popular. I mean, it's very, po it's very possible. I'd say likely even probable that that thing would have come to market and failed magnificently. And that would have, in fact, ushered in a faster decline of Windows because Windows, as part of a broader computing market, not just PCs, suddenly becomes smaller and smaller much more quickly as a result. So I'm not saying this is going to succeed. I'm saying that this is giving Microsoft a much better chance to succeed than if they had gone the Windows Phone phone route, as much as I might have personally uh, preferred that. Yeah. It always surprises me that uh, Microsoft's long and uh, unhappy history with tablets, well, <laughs> yes. sp spanning a decade, 
you know? is, com- is it's completely forgotten. It's like, oh, now Microsoft's in tablets. Uh, they've always been in tablets. <laughs> No, but this time they're serious. But this time it's going to work. <laughs> this time it's personal. <laughs> this time, you know, but it really is. It's, I, I, I guess uh, it's just human. We don't have much sense of history. Um, and it is really a reinvention of the concept. And I think they did it right this time. They did something that was touch-centric. And I think that probably they learned from 10 years of trying to adapt a non-touch sectoric operating system to a tablet or a convertible that that well, doesn't work. And that it, you, know, you can't uh, have a stylus. It, you you got to have a touch-centric yeah. OS if you're going to make but it. But that wouldn't have been possible 10 years ago, right? Well, and I think technology that, wasn't there. Absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah. the tablet stuff that we got uh, from Microsoft came out of the Windows group. It came at a time when Windows was still incredibly dominant and was the right. only solution. Right. And, right. and those guys were still operating from that kind of tunnel vision mentality where everything they did was right and everything they did was Windows correct. Windows everywhere was their slogan. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so th- 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 there's a maturity to this that that can only occur by uh, being defeated in the marketplace, by uh, being humbled, by being Humility. wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that sometimes that's what needs to happen. It's probably one of the things that helped. Uh, you don't think of it at the time that way, but you know, it had helped Apple certainly achieve its uh, resurgence. And um, I think it's important. It's just to anyone who follows Microsoft knows. I mean, they, they do their best work. Um, when they have actual competitor, everybody you know, does you know, competing products to uh, everybody to, does. You know, against, it yeah. is no good. Look at AT and T. It is no good to be a monopoly. It just kills innovation. It kills incentive. It just mm-hmm. you just coast. And nobody does well when they're on top. It's always good to be number two. We try harder. I I think uh, that's why I've really tried as hard as I can to keep Twit from ever succeeding. It's uh, <laughs> it's in <laughs> it's in my business plan actually. We will Hi. never succeed our, uh, because success is death. We're going to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you know that it's by. a plan. <laughs> we are going to succeed. <laughs> yes, fool. exactly. Ha ha. <laughs> Fooled you. So uh, we are talking with Paul Throt, Mary Jo Foley about Windows 8, but there's lots more to talk about, uh, and we will do more in just a bit. But first, got to talk a little bit about our good friends at Citrix, the makers of the fabulous remote access app. You know, I know it's always kind of hard to do a go-to-my-PC uh, ad on Windows Weekly because everybody said, well, we got remote desktop. We don't need it. Uh, what, what do you need that for? But there, are, I'll tell you, there's some advantages to, to go to my CPC. First thing I'd point out is remote desktop, RDP, is based on Citrix, right? Uh, Citrix uh, is the enterprise solution for remote access. It's what RDP, li- they licensed that, uh, at Microsoft licensed that from Citrix. And guess who makes go to my PC? Citrix. So y- you are using RDP, but you're using a, v- a very specific design that makes it easier to use because it uses NAT uh, tran- uh, translation or NAT traversal uh, to make it. One of the problems you have, you know, opening ports for RDP and all that stuff, you don't have to worry about because the way Go to My PC works is really cool, is with a third party server. So you log into the server, and then the server has a connection to your office computer. And by doing it that way, with a triangle in effect, you're doing that traversal, you eliminate the need to open ports, and, and it makes you more secure. And it's 128 bit SSL the entire trip, so it's completely encrypted, which means you can use Go to My PC at a coffee shop, at a hotel, where we, we, you really, you know, I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you, if you go to a hotel and you open uh, uh, network connections just to see, you can see all these other computers on the hotel network. They're all visible. This is why SSL, very nice. Um, go to my PC is absolutely sweet. It really is the way fast, easy to use, installs in seconds on your desktop, Mac or PC. And then when you hit the road, you have a great variety of choices uh, in terms of uh, apps. Uh, you can, of course, use it on your desktop, Mac or PC, connecting to a Mac or PC. But you can also use an iPhone. You can also use your iPad. I think it's actually pretty cool if you've got an iPhone um, to log in to your desktop computer, you know, f- from the airport and say, oh, let me get that, you know, email handle or let me get that PowerPoint detail. Uh, let, let me download some data from the network. It's the missing link. Turns your iPad and your iPhone into your office computer no matter where you are. Now, we really got remote access going here. I want you to try it free. I, I, it's just a, it's mind-boggling to think that I've got your, you've got your entire office computer. I have it right now in my pocket wherever I go. Visit gotomypc.com. Click the Try It Free button. You can try this unlimited use for 30 days. When we first started doing these ads, they said you can have an hour. 
in thir- and I said, no, can we have a whole month, nonstop, unlimited use? They said, for you, for you and your fabulous audience, Leo, whatever. So go to mypc.com, click the Try It Free button there. The offer code on this is Windows, easy to remember, and you get 30 days of unlimited use. And then go download the free uh, app for your iPad or your iPhone and, and start accessing your office everywhere you go. It's really a time saver, a life saver, absolutely secure, fast, easy to use. Go to mypc.com. The offer code is Windows. You know, I didn't, we haven't even looked at, is there, what does remote desktop in, uh, in Windows 8 look like? Is it the same? Do you, do, you, do you get Metro and all that stuff? How does that work? So... There's a metro style app uh, for remote access, but there's also the the regular remote desktop connection app is in there. It's just not it's desktop re- readily available, so you have to you can make a shortcut to it and put right. it on your uh, taskbar. I'm you know is this something Microsoft's going to do across the board with these key apps? Is have desktop and metro versions with like with Internet Explorer and RDP? That's an interesting. Uh, one. I'm curious to see if anyone else does that. I mean, IE10 is a weird app because. Uh, the way they describe it is it's essentially it's really two apps, but there's one app engine. Obviously, the rendering engine yeah, is the underneath. same between them. Right. Yeah. Um, similar capabilities, not always. You know, not everything is in both. And then uh, they're essentially two skins on top of the same thing, right? And and what's to stop other people from doing that? And I suppose some will, but I'm curious to see if anyone else does that. You know, maybe a short term thing where we see little versions of both. It's possible. A lot of people are wondering about Office. You know, like so. So yeah. far, what we know is Office 15 is a desktop app, um, not a metro. And people are wondering, you know, will there be a metro style, and will it be now? Will it be later? Will the Office web apps be metro style, or you know, I'm what are they going to do? I guess that they will do a metro version. Why wouldn't they? So, well, because actually, I would have guessed that too. And but once they showed off their first little preview there, it's pretty clear that the desktop version is going to be you know, nuanced a bit, and especially in Huawei, I guess, where it's touch-friendly, even though it's a desktop app. So You don't need uh, to have a Metro version. You know, they have this notion of full-screen apps on the Mac, and I wonder sometimes if Microsoft won't do that on the PC, where as you flip between apps in Windows 8, especially on a Huawei device, the fact that that thing is a, a desktop app may not matter if it's truly full-screen. So it appears as a full-screen experience, you know, and you don't have to really think about right. What it is, you don't see the taskbar and all the right. surrounding Chrome you don't and everything. Need, so, Metro doesn't matter at that point, yeah. Yeah, that might be an interesting way to do it. I have to say, I, I was one of the people who... It's, it's, I'm really, it's really interesting to watch. I watch my own internal process, and I think that this will probably be... I feel like this will be more universal. Mm-hmm. The, the initial reaction is, oh my God, you're dumbing it down. Where are my <laughs> windows? I don't like full screen. And then, uh, and I see this happening on OS X as well. Once, once I get used to the idea that I can quickly context switch from one screen uh, to another yep. um, and, and keep multiple screens open, in effect, um, I kind of prefer it, believe it or not. Maybe I'm alone, but I, it's, it's really nice, of course, on an iPad. But even with the gestures on a, on a desktop, that's yeah. where my, mo- my, my closest experience is OS X uh, Lion with the right. gestures on a laptop. And you feel very comfortable sliding back and forth. You I actually think they did a great job with that. Um, it, I would I imagine Microsoft like will do the same thing, right? Yeah, I don't see it, but it'd be nice if they did. Um, well, and, 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 and Apple, you know, when they released this Magic Trackpad, everybody said, what a piece of... Why would you want... You call yeah, it the until, Tragic Magic Until Lion. Until, until Lion. Lion. And then it suddenly and is... And then suddenly... Oh, yeah. oh, oh, neat. Yeah, but I agree I with you. Up. I, you know, I have this. This is in my drawer because it's like I'm not well. But I that. bet a lot of people use that alongside a mouse, right? Because they're good for different things. Exactly. And obviously, if you have exactly. a laptop, you can use the the trackpad that's exactly. built in. But yeah. I think they did a good job. I mean, within the confines of the you know Mac OS X is a traditional desktop app, and they well, figure out a way to make gestures make sense on that. Do you think uh, Microsoft is is headed that way, or are they going to? I mean, it's no, interesting they they're, focused on uh, keystrokes. You know, well because. Well, they didn't, it's not that they focused on it. It's that they didn't forget it. You know, so uh, Windows users tend to be a little keyboard heavy. Right. They have keyboard equivalents of almost everything. Uh, there are most equivalents of everything. There are. Touch I like that. Of, that they, so you get your stuff. choice. Yeah. And uh, Microsoft's Windows has always been that way. I can remember a day uh, uh, yeah. with Apple. If you lost your mouse, you couldn't use it. Uh, Windows is. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> they've right. always had yep. keyboard equivalents for everything. You don't have to have a mouse, and, and Metro is no different from that. Um, and uh, you know. I, I, I think that's great. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't have a problem with that because what you'll do is you'll find the way that works best for you, and that's how you'll learn it, right? That's how you'll use it. 
Right. Yeah. And I think, and I think you know, uh, something that comes up a lot is, is, you know, there's some things Microsoft is never going to say publicly, but that they're doing. You know, they des- I feel like they designed Windows 8 for tablets. They, they'll never come out and say that, right, that the <laughs> tablet was the reason they did it. And that they, you know, PCs are kind of a second class citizen in Windows 8. Um, but, you know, so, some of my readers have made the point, they said, you know, at, what they really needed to address is their lack of a good tablet operating system first and foremost. And a lot of businesses are just getting onto Windows 7 now. So, you know, they can afford to do something for consumers and for tablets first. And then over time, uh, you know, kind of go at Windows 8 and, you know, with service packs and Windows 9 and make it more friendly to business users right, right around the time they're ready to upgrade. And I think that you'll never hear them say that's the strategy right. uh, because it would be not a good thing for them to say publicly. <laughs> right. Uh, right. But I think that might be the strategy. Interesting. I may actually think I'm playing with keystrokes. I can play press, uh, what is it, control? Yeah, control arrow on OS X and, um, and, and, and switch. Here, I'll show you. So I'm in Metro. This is a Metro virtualization. Just like this, this is, this is a very yeah. nice way to handle uh, multiple workspaces, and I don't feel the lack of windowing. I, I don't. I, yeah, you know, so you could have full screen apps running in each one. Yeah, and you could just yeah. You know. And the context switch is very quick. Uh, you could do that with the with the mouse. I know in Metro by sliding it to the edge, right? Isn't that how it works? You well, you can flick between running apps. You could yeah. flick. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Flick to your heart's content. Uh, let's see here. Um. Oh, can we talk about business? Yeah, I'm looking at your business notes. Features. Business feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I'm getting this question a lot. And Paul actually did a really good post this week about it where we, you know, a lot of business users are saying, okay, forget the UI. Like, let's not talk about the UI for a minute. What is in Windows 8 for me that's not about Metro or not Metro? You know, and um, uh, some of the things have have been publicized to some extent and some haven't. Like, you know, we know that Microsoft's including Windows Defender in the operating system, yes. or it will make it part part yes. of it somehow. Yes. Um, mm. And so, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, what's going to happen? I use Microsoft Security Essentials. What's going to happen now? Is that going to be compatible? And I mean, there are a lot of little things like that that are in there. They're not gigantic improvements, but they're things, you know, worth thinking about, worth knowing about, little enhancements here and there. Um, I think Paul talked about smart screens and uh, IE 10 as being another one of those kind of nice to have. Um, security there's focused. No, there's no like the, silver bullet though, right? I mean, there I think is, that's the big there's issue. no silver yeah. bullet. Yeah. Well, um, I think some of that isn't, am I wrong? But it just feels like we've gotten to a maturity at yeah. this point where in operating systems where it's unreasonable to expect it to be the way yeah. it's been for many years where a new operating system had 483 new features. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, and by the way, I think they did why say this has 300 new features. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, free, do, free them yeah. are business can we move oriented? on? Um, We've kind of figured out what to do in an operating system, and if there's something missing from Windows Seven, I can't think of what it is. Yeah. Right? From, well, right? Well, but that's the thing. I think that I think it's okay. I mean, that's the I, right. I went through this list. Like, here's what they say is new. It's nothing serious for the most part. It's little. You, know, you get to the bottom. You're like, well, so what? I mean. Uh, Everything that was good about Windows 7 is present in exactly. Windows 8. It all works exactly the same. So, And the one thing uh, they did, which, 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 which was important, was security. And that's then they've done that. And um, Well, but I, actually, I think the biggest thing they've done that is important is not worry about the business stuff and really go after the consumer stuff because that's where they're falling apart. Right. You know, this is the crumbling of the Roman Empire. They're going to have, right they're gonna have yeah. business. Yeah. Well, in fact, I think they have to worry a little bit because uh, we keep hearing that businesses are moving to iPads and that, uh, I mean, right. I think right. that so they, this gives they, them an they answer to, to that. shore up and, business too. Right. So yeah. now you have a tablet that is infinitely more manageable than an iPad in an enterprise and is something that people who manage those devices already understand because it's a Windows PC. You know, so there's, there's a nice response to that, you know, and that's, that's sort of a, a business concern. Well, it is a business concern. It's, I would lump it into that kind of consumerization of IT area. But, um, you know, for a real Windows PC running Windows 8, a tablet running an Intel chip or whatever, um, you have a device that is, is far more manageable than an iPad. And that's going to, a lot of organizations are going to be very happy about that. Except, of course, we don't know yet about WOA, right? WOA tablets, <laughs> we don't know how manageable are those going to be really and how manageable aren't they going to be. Um, and, you sure. know, this week Microsoft gave a keynote at CBIT 
um, Kevin Turner, who was the chief operating officer, and everyone was thinking, okay, they're going to come clean about Woa tablets. They're going to say something about, <laughs> here it comes, I'm ready. And no, nope, no, nothing about that this week. All, all he did talk about was um, another business feature of uh, Windows 8 called Windows to Go, where you can uh, have your desktop boot on a bootable um, thumb drive. Uh, which Paul, I was asking him, I'm like, can you get that to work? I, I'm hearing mixed just, things, and <laughs> it doesn't work. I couldn't get it, it to work. So it doesn't work. Great. Well, by the way, on, in my case, I, it, it took me two hours to generate the disk twice, and the second time I tried it on my laptop, it's an ultrabook. I actually fried the bootloader, and it would only boot into like the Asus recovery partition. So I'm not, I'm not like a normal person. I actually have a Windows Seven recovery disk. I know how to fix it, but. I was hoping to get it to work through other means, and finally, I think I think it was actually just last night, I finally booted the thing up with the recovery disk, fixed the boot partition. It's fine, but you know, you go through that kind of event with something like that, and you don't want to even play with it anymore because you're afraid to put it near anything important, you know. But anyway, in, a, in the future, Windows to Go will probably be a very cool feature and easier to use. But right now, it remains, um, you know, something that's essentially hidden in there. You, it requires. Not third-party tools, but other Microsoft deployment tools to uh, just to even install it. You know, so it's yeah. it's kind of a tough. Thing. Ours, ours, ours. Technica posted how to how to do a Windows to go thumb drive. How to, how we how we did it, and it's such an involved, crazy <laughs> yeah, process. Yeah, I read it. Line. And I'm like, wow. Yep. <laughs> but that's I'm not sure gonna, everyone that's listen, Everyone listening to this podcast has used the disk part command line tool. So I you'll love be. That. You'll be, we'll really, be hearing really from happy. This <laughs> yeah, yeah. part, it's, love that. Uh, it's, it's awful, uh, yeah. but that's but that's this is a beta, right? I mean, you presume that they will work they work that out. Before well, they, they told me, yeah. So when I when I talked to Microsoft, um, it seems like thirty years ago, but whenever that was a week ago, they said that the Windows to Go is not part of the consumer preview in the sense that there's no friendly wizard that just makes this happen. But right. the, this was is a feature that was coming down the pike, and they mentioned CBIT to me. It's funny, you, you know. Mary Jo mentioned I wrote this article about business features. I wrote that on Tuesday, and I thought, or published it on Tuesday. I knew that sometime in March, CBIT was going to happen, and Microsoft would expand on this stuff, and maybe there'd be more to write. But little did I know that that very day they were on stage giving a talk about Windows 8 in business, and there was absolutely no new information. So what I had written, you know, a couple of days previous was still current because they really didn't expand on it in any way, shape, or form. Jeff in London I is. Say we're, we're already getting people saying, "I got Windows to go to work. It works perfectly. It's no problem. I've got it. What? Right. What do so, you got against yeah. disk part? You know that thing's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am an idiot. Uh, so it can be done. It can be done, yeah. but um, and uh, maybe know, maybe the maybe the intent is that this is something the IT department will do, and they will give you their yeah. you know here it yeah. is oh, yeah. here's your key. And yep. uh, they don't want to make well, it too easy. Uh, to well, I, actually, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a friendly BitLocker style button where you just kind of click it and it happens. I, right. I, I think the way it works now is you, well, I know the way that it works now is, is difficult and, and time consuming. Um, yeah, well, someone has gone to the moon. That doesn't mean that we go to the moon <laughs> regularly. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's hard. I'm just, it's, Are you saying something. making a Windows to go disk is as difficult as a, a mission to the, the moon? The technology is very similar, you know. <laughs> It requires a slide rule and understanding the effect of gravity on a moving object in space. I it's, think it's... that the uh, acceleration is in meters per second squared. Let me just... Uh... So Jeff in London on Twitter is saying, you guys are neglecting the many thousands, nay, millions of custom corporate apps that will prevent migration to Windows. Is that true, though? I mean, can't you... No, why, why won't why they work? Why would they? They would work, wouldn't they? On the desktop. Well, I'm wondering I would, if he's, why wouldn't maybe they? IE six apps. I'm I'm betting well, he's thinking IE six. You know what? Let's apps. abandon those. That's not a bad thing. Or let's bring them forward with Hyper V. I mean, okay. you know, Windows okay. Seven included a uh, virtualization technology that was very right. primitive. Windows okay. eight includes one that's pretty excellent. So, I guarantee you, know, you the IT guy wants to get rid of IE six. That's the yeah, that's they do. The thorn they in do, their but side. They're stuck. They're stuck. I understand <laughs> so all the internet of them are stuff stuck. is designed for features in IE6. They are using ActiveX and things. What? Ha what is there an ActiveX equivalent on any of these? There's nothing, is there? On what? On that Windows 8. I mean, there's no like you can't you can't use ActiveX, can you? I mean, they're trying to get you away from plugins, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get them Leo away. I'm still from trying to handle H.264 video I there. I, uh, <laughs> when, and, and I have to say, when ActiveX was first announced, it, it was apparent to me, even though apparently not to Microsoft, what a huge security issue this is going to be because basically you're allowing I, anybody to run arbitrary I, code. I distinctly remember thinking that ActiveX was the greatest thing I'd ever heard of because well, I really cool. understood. I understood COM 
and they were bringing it to the web and I thought right. and it was going to be smaller and lighter and faster and I thought to myself this is going to be fantastic and I believe that's exactly when the gaping moth of hell opened up. And, <laughs> it is, <laughs> it know, is exactly it, when the gaping moth of hell opened up. Since, I mean, yeah. yeah, it was a great idea from a functionality point of view allowing a web basically allows a website to run arbitrary code on your computer. Great idea. Brilliant. Brilliant. What could possibly go what wrong? Could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> That was in Microsoft's uh, like fins and taillight era when they uh, bigger was always better, you know. More was always better. But I can understand. But they, but what's happened is, and it's taken a, a little while, but they've retrenched. And by, with things like Hyper V, they're allowing you to use these technologies in a safe way. Um, and I think that's great. I don't. I think that they're they, they, look. Nobody knew that the web was going to be the dangerous uh, sewer. I, I bet that I bet someone knew, Leo. Actually, well, I knew. <laughs> I knew. I remember. I'll go back and find the tape of me saying. Are they I nuts? <laughs> but uh, well, how could me posting where I am at all times of the day on Facebook ever be a security <laughs> or privacy problem? Well, that's a yeah. Okay, there's some other issues there. To, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't see. see how that could backfire. Leo. What could go wrong? It is the <laughs> motto, in fact, of all computer users everywhere. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? It's got to be a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy joke in there somewhere too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't panic. <laughs> don't panic. Um, so uh, they still. Have they? They've told us what we can run the consumer preview on. Anything that runs Windows Seven, it runs fine on. Virtually, um, yeah. But Sorry. that, but but <laughs> in the world of Windows, it's really people don't really upgrade OSs. They buy new computers, right? Is that still the case? You right. think? Yeah, yes. I, definitely. I, going definitely. forward, yes. it's not going to change. Nobody's... Normal people, normal people like me. That's how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Power oh. users. Maybe not. <laughs> well, I think, you know, I, and I hate to keep bringing up Apple because I know it, it makes everybody cringe. But Apple's done an interesting thing where you have the, for $30 in their app store, you buy the new operating system, yeah. you push a button, and now you yep. have it. And Somebody that's asked me changed about that how people on, uh, think about operating system upgrades, you know? It's I, like, I pray to God, and I mean this uh, emphatically and very seriously, that Microsoft does exactly that. And, and the reason is that Windows 8 is such a major change. This Metro stuff is... 1.0 technology, it is by definition going to be incomplete right. when it ships, and it's going to need to be updated very quickly. It cannot withstand three years in the market without any changes. So right. Microsoft has their own way of doing things. They may do like feature packs or however they want to call them, but I think ideally what they would do is release yearly versions of Windows 8 that update the, uh, the functionality, They're very cheap or even free for people, ship it automatically on new PCs so that everyone's up to date. Um, I don't see how they could do otherwise. I've heard nothing about this. I mean, I don't, I'm not speaking from any sort of internal knowledge, but I, w I, I really, really do hope that they do something like that. I think it would be folly, great folly to do otherwise. Meanwhile, uh, for this uh, update, Windows 8 update at least, uh, people will be buying new machines. Have they, has anybody, has Dell, has anybody said, here's our Windows 8 platform? Are we going to, remember the whole, you know, Windows Vista ready, Windows Vista yeah. capable this is Windows 8 on ready, oh. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> what is it going to look like? What's the, what's the landscape yeah. going to look like? We're getting to the point where we have to start thinking about that. I know. I, I really, I, I'm worrying about this already because I, when Windows 7 came out, I still remember this. I, I was like, okay, I'm ready to buy a Windows 7 PC. I went out, started looking around, and I'm like, I don't find anything I like, like nothing. Right. I mean, there were, no, there were not really ultra books at that point. I mean, because it was like three years ago and right. there were really not a lot of thin and light laptops. There was nowhere to go, you know, kick the tires and look for new machines if you're just a, an average consumer, you know. And I, I'm worrying already about this because we're starting to see like some demo things like at CBIT this week. They, there was a new Fujitsu Ultrabook that was demoed and Intel demoed a, um, a prototype laptop with that's touch enabled. That would be a very good Windows 8 machine, they're saying. But I don't want I don't want a laptop where I have to stick my arm out and touch. I I just know I'm not going to do that, and so I'm really <laughs> waiting <laughs> to see Luddite. something. Luddite, I'm a, yeah, I'm a luddite. I don't want to like go and uh, touch. No, no I think I you're right though. I think that this is <laughs> no, this is where this is where you know people are saying, well, it'll run on an X any machine that runs XP, so they're all metro ready. No. <laughs> No, no. Wrong. yes, no. Very, there's no. I don't think I don't see why anyone would buy another PC. Right? No, you need no, touch. I, I, you need, I, this is a whole I, different I, world. I, yeah, I think Windows 8 more than any recent version of Windows is going to require new hardware for the for that very reason because you're going to get an awesome experience with touch. And I think ideally uh, you're going to see things where people will have a tablet that will dock and become sort of like a desktop computer with mm -hmm, all the mm -hmm. you know display and keyboards and stuff hanging off of it. Mm -hmm. like you're going to see those hybrid Prime. laptops. Yep. 
-hmm. Yeah, it, right. Transforming laptops that uh, kind of flip around and are a tablet or, you know, where you touch it or they are a laptop where you're typing and using the trackpad or whatever. So um, I, I, we it's need to see you know, something like this. Right. Well, I mean, I, like, I let's see it. Yeah, where is <laughs> it? Yeah. Right. So let, let's try Let's see if the, between the two of us, we can think of one reason, one person, perhaps wh why this hasn't happened. Right. I mean, why yes. haven't the biggest hardware manufacturers on Earth, HP, yeah. Dell, whoever they are, Lenovo, yeah. et cetera, come out and said, here's what we're doing. Right. Can you think of a reason? I can. <laughs> and the initials are SS. <laughs> right. So Microsoft has right. their own schedule for this stuff. And my my guess, and it's sort of an educated guess, is that this stuff will, of course, happen further down the road. They don't want to do that now because, I mean, let's face it, Windows PC sales or Windows licenses or whatever you want to say have been relatively flat recently. And that coming out now with awesome new PC designs that won't be for sale for six months could be very detrimental to people buying but things show now. show us a prototype. Show us a prototype. Like, show us I something I think, real. Well, CBIT's coming up. Is that where we'll see these? We just had it, and there oh, weren't the uh, See, it's over? Yeah. Damn, I missed just... it again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Nothing there, huh? Yeah. Amy went with a whimper. No. <laughs> no. And, and, you know, the thing we still haven't seen at all are WOA tablets. Like, right. nothing. Yeah. I mean, oh, at I, all. I, please. I, yeah. So these things will all happen eventually, but, I mean, I, again, they're on their own schedule. I mean, this is part of the, uh, the fun, fundamental disagreement I think I have with these folks is that their willingness to communicate is... Um, not very good, right. you know, and it's, I, th I think it's, I understand why they do it, of course, but I also think that they're harming um, potential buyers, you know, uh, by not coming clean on what they're doing. I mean, I think they, they could generate the a lot of The week you have the iPad 3 launch, well, sorry, iPad, no number, <laughs> launch. The week you have that, I mean, and, you know, everybody's owing and eyeing over the hardware, and then you have Windows 8, and you're running it like on an old, older Samsung mm -hmm. tablet, or if With you get the build fan. tablet, you're running it. Uh, Right, that there's yeah. no good battery life. I mean, sure. so it's just not making you excited about like, wow, what could I do with Windows 8? Yeah. You have no idea because you don't really know what the hardware is going to be. They're not very good at responding to things like that. At, I mean, this, at this point, you know, when iPad, uh, when we saw the new iPad yesterday, it was very clear that Android tablets are in the dust. I mean, they're just left in the dust. And the, and the last best hope for a competitor for iPad is Windows 8, is WOA. Um. Mm -hmm. And maybe the best thing to do is just let people keep thinking that <laughs> someday and it's not show anything. I wouldn't show anything right now. Maybe people are scrambling to get retina displays. I don't know. I, I wouldn't show anything right now until you could show I something that's competitive. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the iPad N. I like it. Mary, Mary Jo tweets uh, Windows Weekly no version number. Starting right now. <laughs> we'll right. talk about that in just a bit uh, as we continue. Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com. Uh, Paul Therott from the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. Let's talk a little bit about backup. You know, it is true that when you want to move to a new operating system, uh, the easiest, simplest way to do it would be to have a great backup of all your data. You get that new machine in and you restore it. Wouldn't, you know... That's one of the many advantages of having a good backup. Of course, the chief advantage is having a good backup. But when it comes time to move to Windows 8, you're going to be glad you've got Carbonite. Carbonite online backup. It's automatic. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to set a schedule. It's continuous. I think that's really important because if you have a backup that happens only once a week, what happens on day six and when your computer crashes, you're going to lose six days of work. That could be the most important work that you're losing. Or, you know, so c continuous, so you're always backed up, and it's unlimited for all the data on your internal drive for less than five bucks a month. And the, and so you're getting the backup, you're getting the Scott. By the way, it's uh, cloud storage. You can access it anytime you log on to your Carbonite account on any computer or smartphone or tablet. All your data is there. So you get this great cloud storage for less than five bucks a month. And when it's time for your Windows 8, when your WOA arrives or your Windows 8 desktop arrives, you just log into your Carbonite account there. You move, basically, you're moving it over. You say restore and all your data, boom. Isn't that, it? I mean, that is sweet. I've done it and it's just fantastic. But don't wait. You want to start it right now because we've got a special uh, two week offer. No credit card needed. All you need to do is use the offer code Windows and you're set. Carbonite.com. Actually, there are a number of plans and you can use the offer code Windows for any of them. So there's that $59 plan, which is everything on your internal drive, 
great for a laptop or a single computer. But if you use external drives, they have a home, uh, you know, a pro f- version for that. They have a small business version as well for multiple computers. All of it very affordable, very effective. That same great Carbonite technology. Mac or PC, go to Carbonite.com. Use the offer code Windows, and you could try it free for two weeks. And if you decide to buy after that two week trial, and I do encourage you to do the trial. Always do the trials. I mean, that's one of the reasons. We really ask all our advertisers to offer trial versions. It really, to me, it's the best way to say we believe in our product. We know if you try it free, you will like it. Um, if you decide you like it after you try it for two weeks, you'll get two bonus months when you use Windows when you buy. 14 months for the price of 12. No credit card required, though, for the free trial. Visit Carbonite.com. Just use the offer code Windows Carbonite. It's backup. Done right in a great way to prepare for an upgrade uh, to Windows 8. We are talking about Windows 8, but I guess we cannot avoid talking a little bit about what Paul, and I know this is Paul, calls the <laughs> iPad. Eh. Eh. Actually, did I do that? Did it's you like do that? Have... Mary Jo, are you taking responsibility for eh. I'm not. I'm not taking responsibility it is a, for that. <laughs> Let's just say it is a little weird that they didn't give it a version number. That might be a new strategy, though. I, I, you know, oh, it's definitely there's a reason, but it's just confusing because they're going to sell the iPad too still. Yeah, I, I right. So Apple used to uh, Apple has always actually had like sort of model numbers that they don't really discuss. You know, they're and people who know about these things know to look those up when they want to part. You know, I need right. a uh, a battery for a white MacBook. Well, which white MacBook? Well, you know, they're different version numbers. They so. use the num. They use the year. They'll use generation. So this is the third generation iPad. That's how they describe I, it. Yeah, the ordering. I think because it looks just like the last one. Now what they're saying is, look, we have a, a a family of iPads. Yes, you know, I agree. And I think that I think that's all they're trying to do. And frankly, you know, it's I I I think it's nice and I think it's smart that for the most part, uh, existing covers and cases and things will just work. And I think that's a big deal because, like I said, once you reach a certain number. You can't just change the dock connector arbitrarily and yeah. change the size by half an inch and screw everything up. I mean, it, it's a nice bit of continuation when you can do something like this. Right. So I, I think right. they were smart in a way uh, to do all that stuff. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. Uh, I mean, at least I, that's the strategy. It might be a yeah. little confusing in the marketplace. I don't know. You can't call it the new iPad forever. <laughs> no, but maybe it, no. That's true. So maybe next year when there's another new iPad, the it new just new becomes, iPad. <laughs> well, no, it, it's sort of like the iPod Touch. Remember, for a while yeah. there, they had last no, year's model was the last. It's just it like their notebooks. Version. They, you know, you there are three different versions or four different versions, and they're all called MacBook Pros, and you just mm-hmm. choose the one. You know, same with the iMac. It's not like iMac one, two, and three. So right. I think that's. I think you're right. I think that's the the strategy. Uh, behind it, what do you think of Retina though? Does doesn't that? Oh, I think I think it's huge. That's actually. that's change. I think that changes everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are no other devices like that except for the iPhone, and um, and that's a much smaller screen, so I don't think you see it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It's you know, so it's four times the resolution of the current iPad in the same exact size, right? So you're going to get a clarity of text in uh, ebook readers, which I think is going to be a big deal. Your obviously photos and movies and stuff forth are going to look beautiful. Um, I'm surprised they were able to keep the battery life going with that kind of stuff. So that's amazing, and I think they've kind of raised the bar. And the you know I've already gotten questions from people who've said you know, so when am I going to get a Retina display on a Windows 8 tablet? So obviously from a technical perspective, there's absolutely no reason that something like that can happen. But I think it's also somewhat telling and somewhat negative on the Microsoft side that in a year in which they they knew Apple was doing this, right? We are we all knew this was coming. Um, so Apple ships this Retina iPad 2, and what we're talking about are 1366 by 768 tablets. And I can assure you, come Christmas time, that the majority of those tablets will be 1366 by 768 and not some incredibly high resolution. So uh, that's, that's exactly, a little disappointing. That's exactly you know? right. That's And that's... Uh, that's- Unless- Unless that's some of the hardware we haven't seen, right? Like I saw, I think I saw somebody tweet yesterday, Asus is doing something like the Retina display quality with something they've got coming up. Um, So maybe, I don't know. Well, Uh, surely Apple didn't buy up every 9.7 inch Retina (laughs) Well, yeah, they didn't invent it. I mean, someone else makes this. So They're buying it probably from LG or Samsung. So Yeah, and and there are possibilities too. Remember, you know, when uh, the Asus uh, um, Ultrabook that I have is, is... absolutely a macbook air ripoff you know but one of the couple of advantages it has over an, a macbook air is that the resolution is higher you know it's 1600 by 900 instead of um 
what's the 13 inch MacBook for a 1440 by whatever um, or whatever it is. I don't even know. Um, I don't know. Do I care? So please don't tell me. But, <laughs> it, but it is. But it is. But it is a higher resolution. Um, You'll be so told it's, not, whether it, you yeah, care know, or not. You're going to be told As, every time. I, I yeah, 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 I know. I know. <laughs> In fact, I'm I think somebody's to, already I'm, tweeted it. <laughs> I am trying to find out what else on this very topic because what I want to see in my inbox is inbox is MacBook Air, MacBook Air, MacBook Air, MacBook yeah, Air. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying. So yes. it's possible that yes, of course, we will see things like that. I, I think overall that the primary advantage of the PC market is retained because we're going to have a a plethora of choices, both sizes, physical sizes of devices and the resolutions, possibly aspect ratios as well. I mean, it's going to be all kinds of different uh, things. So, you know, that that remains. But again, you know, the, the sort of silence, it, I think it would have been cool and smart of Microsoft to go after Apple this week, just like they went after Google a few weeks back and said, well, here's what we're doing, you know, and cause some fear and certainty and doubt with the iPad market. And, and cause some people to say, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't throw $830 in the wind and maybe I should hold on and, and see what's happening here. Right. right. Or just in Bar at Bar the Barcelona Consumer Preview launch, just hold up something that puts, you know, hey, look mm -hmm. at this. It looks kind of like a retina display, doesn't it? Like a little, you could oh, keep some mystery this to week, it. But... Yeah, this year. Maybe yeah. they yeah. can't. It is possible. Maybe Remember, Apple has $100 billion in the bank. It is possible they've, in fact, bought up every single display of this resolution i suspect i suspect what's going to happen they could buy all glass on earth I, I, you know, who, who, can, who can say i, I you know. suspect what's going to happen i would I'd be willing to put, i'd be so willing to bet tough. money on this that apple will next do all of their displays this way they'll all be 263 okay. pixels and, by, and by the way so this this sort of eases us into a somewhat technical topic but the one thing i would also point out to people which is a detriment to the windows side is that even on the Mac, which is not resolution independent, it's still a bitmap type display, right. they've always done a much better job of handling super high res than, than Windows does. Um, in Windows 8, as in Windows 7, it's a very awkward thing. You can kind of bump up the display sizes, but it's it's kind of like a brute force thing. It's like 125%, 150%, and it's a fairly lousy experience. I mean, I, on a 13-inch tablet like the Samsung, you kind of want to go up to the next level, you know, above 100%. I think it's actually 150 on this device, but whatever it is, 125 or 150%. Because you, if you want to be able to press those things and explore, you know, they need to be big enough to hit. But they're bitmaps, and they're just, it's just kind of a lousy experience. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, if Mac OS X, what's it called, Mountain Lion, also has super high-res icons and will support they do. retina displays. Okay. They've already, we already know the resources they're putting in have double because res. Because that's what Apple does, right? Yep. All right, so Mountain Lion era... Um, MacBook Airs or iMacs or something or could very easily have humongo resolution displays, but you know, retina displays. And um, yeah, that's, I'm, that's it's a competitive advantage. It just is, and that's something that the Windows world really needs to think about because we're we're busy kind of nickel and diming each other over here, and you know, the 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 bar is being raised on the other side of the fence. Yep. And then you know, on the Definitely. on the lower end side of the fence, with Apple dropping the price of the iPad two down to three ninety nine. You know, I saw a number of people tweeting yesterday saying, oh, boy, so that's the new bar for WOA tablets, right, yeah, yeah. which are supposed yeah. to compete with iPad 2. And, you know, Definitely. can can and will anybody come out with a, a WOA tablet at 399 or cheaper? We don't know right. yet, but because we don't even know what they look like yet or anything about them pretty much. <laughs> I, I presume they're uh, flat and have some sort of yes. a display on the front. <laughs> yes, perhaps. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> I've read that they will have a, a Windows key button of some kind and possibly volume Thank controls. You. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> you can see it just kind of comes together in your mind. Yes, right? uh, they'll be on and off and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, they will. It's it a, actually be. how do you actually this I, 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 I don't mean to go back to Windows 8, but yeah. how, how do you turn off Windows 8 machine? Oh, Leo. Oh, <laughs> don't right. get Paul started on this one. <laughs> Just curious. I'm sorry. I feel like it, an it, idiot. It's okay. It's okay. Do you have it in front of you? Yes. All right. So Windows key plus I or Windows key plus C, either one. Actually, Windows key plus I is better because it goes directly to uh, settings. Okay. Windows key then, I. Sorry. Power button. It's right there. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Uh, I know it's hard. No, 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 it's good. It's I don't good. mean that for you. I mean you that for everyone. You can do it under the charm, <laughs> right? You can do a charm with a You can do it from the charms, too. Yeah. Well, but the charms is an extra step because uh, from the charms, you have to hit settings. So 
instead of doing that, you can go right so to Windows settings. Windows Key I and Settings, and there's the so. power button right there. Easy. Yep. Easy peasy. Works, this, works, this will work from any screen in Windows 8. Easy peasy. Just hit that. Oh, so, shoot. Oh, good. <laughs> Remember the last time we did this? <laughs> I shut down while we were in the middle of the show. Yeah, like, and then you click it. You're not going to click it. I clicked it. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. then he disappeared. <laughs> and it was Don't. gone. Don't. Oh, too late. Uh, uh, all right. So, but you know, uh, the reason the reason they're kind of hiding it, as people have said, is because they don't want you to shut your Yeah, you don't turn tablet. tablets off usually. Right. Yeah. So if you have a laptop, you might want to turn that off. Mm -hmm. I've gotten but, an, an inordinate number of emails from people who are claiming that, you know, they they have to or that it is better to do that. Um, and I'm sure that's true on, you know, legacy hardware and so forth. Um, I, I think people misunderstand how modern PCs work. But even in those situations where you, for whatever reason, have to shut this thing down every night uh, because you are that much of a micromanager of the computer <laughs> and need that extra kilowatt no, of whatever I it is. I shut no, mine whatever. down a few times a week. <laughs> All right, so I'm making, I'm making fun of Mary Jo. It, but the point is, it's not hard. It's just not hard. And just as I, I remember, I, when Windows Vista shipped, I, I had an interview with um, Jim Alchin, who ran the Windows division at the time, barely, because he was on the way out. But, you know, the one thing I complained to him about Vista was I didn't like that they'd, they'd changed shutdown. Because in Windows XP, you could do this series of keyboard commands very quickly. And I, I don't now I don't remember it, but I remember saying to him, Shutting down a Windows computer is da 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 da. It's that it's these three keystrokes, and then if you want to reboot, it's these three because you hit R instead of U at the end. You know, you could do H for hibernation. And I said, you know, the new way you do it, you, you can't do that anymore. You actually have to click it with the mouse or, you know, navigate around with the keyboard or whatever. And he's like, oh, he's like, that's a, you know, he's like, that was interesting. You know, we I guess we did make that a little harder. But he said, you know, he goes, we change things in every Windows version. You'll learn how to do it officially, and you'll get good at it. And <laughs> we I, and, change and, everything every time just to make you happy. <laughs> no, but the point was, uh, whatever that keyboard combination in XP, it was some three yeah, keys no, in a row. No, I remember. Yeah, you yeah. know, Windows key plus I, easy. Yep. And if you have a touch-based screen, you can just swipe in from the side, get the, get the terms up, settings, and, you know, there's like an additional tap, I guess. But the, the things you're tapping or clicking on are all right next to each other. So when you swipe in from the side of the screen, you're swiping in right where that settings thing is going to be. You're not moving very far. It's very, very easy. I, I This is one of those little niggling complaint things that I don't quite understand. I mean, just give it a second. It's really not that hard. <laughs> give it some time. You can do it. I mean, they weren't right. It's like you haven't even finished configuring the OS, and you're already tweeting about how hard it is to shut I it down. I can't like, turn it off. It's kind of off. a strange. It's a strange thing, but yeah. Um. Uh, this is an interesting one, and I, I have to admit, we had uh, uh, the uh, uh, Brian Jacket from On Live uh, on stage with us on at CES, demonstrating. Can I ask you a question about him? Does yeah. he look like a Bond villain? I picture him. <laughs> no, like he's him. a really nice. Guy. I, I've known Brian for years. <laughs> he was at Slingbox, and before that, he was at uh, I think he was at Roku. I mean, the guy's a great guy. He's yeah. not the he's the marketing guy. He's not the you know, he's not the evil genius. I, I, so, no. but I know the on life guys, and it was originally gaming, and then they shocked us all by releasing this iPad app that gave yep. you virtualized Windows and gave you Microsoft Office. And I asked him very specifically, I said, Wow, that's cool. How does that license work? And he said, No, we buy a license for a certain number of people. And uh, if you, you know, if we, if that more than that are using it, you just can't log in, but we bought a lot of licenses. He said, No, it's licensed. Maybe, maybe he was, it's not. Is that what we're hearing? Yep, yeah. maybe it's not. And and you know, so what ha what's happened? It just happened this afternoon, actually. Microsoft posted um, something on one of their licensing blogs saying, um, "We're we're uh, let me get their exact wording because it's kind of telling. We're actively engaged with on live, with the hopes of bringing them into a properly licensed wow, scenario." Wow! Wow! Um, wow! So. You know, what it seems to be, it's it, you kind of have to read between the lines of this Microsoft blog post because they're not saying they're suing them. Um, it sounds like they're negotiating with they're them. They're working yes. it out. They're working it yeah, out. Yeah, they're working it out. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, uh, it seems to be the bone of contention from what I can tell is when you use on live on an iPad or an Android tablet, you don't, there's no checks and balances to see, do you as the user own a license to Office or Windows? Sure. Um, and if okay, you don't. Why, why would there be? Yeah, because if you don't, by Microsoft's licensing terms, uh, you have to, the user has to have a license for those things. 
Yeah. I'm uh, not making right. this up. <laughs> breaking the law. Breaking the law. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it seems like that might be the bone of contention. It seems also like it took Gartner writing about this saying, how the heck, are, how the heck how is OnLive do doing that? this? Yeah. Uh, because none of Microsoft's other desktop hosting partners seem to be doing this. And wouldn't they all do it if they could do it? So why why isn't everybody doing do it. it? We should all do yeah. it. Yeah, let's all do it. Birds do it. doing it, Leo. Bees do it. Even educated <laughs> fleas do it. Let's do it. Yeah, so this, this seems to be what's going on. Um, I've asked on live for comment, and there's been no comment so far uh, about what's going on here. They don't so, speak about current litigation. Well, it's funny because I did think, I, I did wonder. Uh, yeah. Well, golly, that uh, how do you do that? And they were and, so, yeah. and they were very clear. They said, oh, no, no, that's fine. We licensed. They seemed, uh, they seemed like they really got it. You know, that, uh, no, no, we. We, uh, we understand. There's an issue. Uh, we, we know how it works. Yeah, we bought the license. Oh, sorry. I, I've got somebody correcting me here on Twitter. It's actually the device, not the user, that has to have the VDA license. Ah. So See, that's, that's the problem because the device, of course, problem. isn't right. controlled by OnLive. Yes. Uh, yep. You're using it in virtualization. Yep. That's, therein lies the problem. So that may be that OnLive did, in fact, believe that they could do what they're doing. And Microsoft. I think all they have well, to do is look at their download way. numbers and then buy that many Windows licenses and they'll be all set. <laughs> Apparently not, yep. but apparently not, right? That's the apparently point. Apparently not. Yeah. 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 That's uh, what they so, thought. Yeah. Yeah. It I just, wonder how it's much a Windows things, license it sounds, would cost. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it sounds no, too mean, good really, to be I mean, true. It, maybe it was. <laughs> Probably is. Maybe it <laughs> was. Hold on a second. So th this solution actually works really well, right? And if you actually needed to use this thing for some reason. It's God fantastic. No, it's fantastic. It, it, no, it works. Yeah. It, it really works. So how much would you pay for that? In other words... If you had to pay thirty dollars for that, would I that think make they're it what are they charging? Five bucks a month, something like that. Yeah, something like okay. that. Okay, right, so does that make it okay? I mean, does does the five dollar a month version actually cover whatever Microsoft's licensing costs well, are? It would have you know, to. A volume license and, agreement and going forward, it will because. <laughs> well, that's what I'm wondering. In other words, is, is this still a, both a viable business right. for them and right. for the end user? Is it something that makes sense to pay for? Right. You know, and at what point does it not become, or does it just become silly to pay for something like that? Right. I don't know. I mean, I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, we're going to find out. We will learn. Yeah, it's very. I find it. I find it fascinating. Fascinating. Me too. Me too. Windows <laughs> Server Eight Beta. We talked a little bit about that last week, didn't we? Just a little yeah. bit. I feel Just bad. I've ignored this. You know, I like the server guys a lot, and I like server a lot. And unfortunately for them. Uh, yeah, well, you, know, you know, it's well, like having Hanukkah the same week as Christmas. They're you just kind of push to that. them aside. You know? <laughs> Come on. They got to be used to that. Right? They got to be used to it. But I mean, I, I, the funny thing is, and maybe it's not funny, but I've, I've actually written a lot about Windows Server 8. I just haven't published any of it. And so I've been every day I've sort of picked this thing up again and said, I really got to get this going and get this out there. And I write a little bit and um, it's turning into a decent article, but it would have been a great article like a week ago. You know, like I just it's just hard with all this Windows 8 stuff going on. And of course, right. I'm also working on the book. It's it's just it's being pushed to the side. I feel bad about that because there really are some cool things going on there. And I think that this product is in, in some ways more I don't know, mature is the right way to say it, but more mature, if you will, than, you know, the client part of it in, in some ways. Huh. Yeah. People who, who've tested the beta or who are testing it, I mean, they really are raving about it. And, uh, I, I was writing down a list of some of the things that people are like, I'm like, what do you think so cool about it? You know, and I, man, the list is pretty endless. Um, one one of our uh, listeners, Aiden Finn, suggested we mention online backup service. It's like one of those things you don't hear much about it, but there's going to be an online backup service um, for the Windows 8 beta letting you uh, do file and folder backups to the cloud. That's pretty cool. You know, and there, there's like lots of little things like that. Um, what was something else somebody told me? Um, now supports 160 logical processors per Hyper-V ho host, as well as 1,024 VMs per host. I mean, wow. the numbers are kind of mind boggling. And, you know, for people who are server administrators, this is the stuff they just think is like, wow, even way better than anything about Metro or tablets. This is like their gravy here, right? Right, right. They love this yeah. stuff. <laughs> well, I think the thing with servers that that stuff was all pretty much there in the... Uh, Developer preview, not all of it. I mean, RFS was added more recently and so forth. But 
Um, you know, what we've seen since that release is just a, a maturation of the user experience. You know, the servant manager is a lot more usable and nicer looking, whatever that's worth. Um, it's still got kind of a, a weird, flat, you know, Metro-style UI, but um, it, it's, it's, it's more of that, you know, in, in line with that vision of this is the one tool you'll probably need. Um, and it works that way. You know, it's nice. They have the different ways you can install it. You know, server core is the default mode now. They have a minimal UI mode. Uh, and then the full server mode. They're, they're shipping the RSAT tools uh, simultaneously with the release, which they've never done before. And what that's going to allow people to do is manage Windows servers remotely using the Windows client and not having to log on to the machine directly, right? So you'd be able to do that from day one. In the past, that release always came some number of weeks or even months after the server release for some reason. But this time, they're they're tying them together. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. I just I thought we should throw them a bone. Um, I feel I feel bad. I just I, I I'll get to it and um, you know, throw me I'm a sure freaking bone. <laughs> uh, the bone bone thrown. Does it run on a tablet? Do you is there a server tablet version? <laughs> no, that's just mean. That just is there a WOA version? Yeah, can I get like WOA server eight? WOA server Enterprise. eight. Get this ready. Should. Here it comes. <laughs> Uh, Tango, we did, uh, we haven't done any Windows Phone stuff. Uh, of course, uh, it's funny it's because like a, yeah, yeah, Mobile World reason. Congress uh, got eclipsed by Windows 8 news. Yep. Yeah. Um, which is, that of was, course. That was nice of them, huh? Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> just you. Just show up and wreck your party. Just ruined the party. So was there any, <laughs> I, you know, I don't even know if we talked about this last week. Did, was there any yeah. Barcelona news for Win, uh, Windows Phone? Define news, Leah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. They talked yeah. about Tango. There was. <laughs> they talked about tango without ever saying the word without ever saying the word tango. Ah, um, which is which hilarious. Kind of yeah, how do you it do was that? kind of hilarious. Yeah, because they talk about every other code name they have. I mean, they use the word Apollo. They use the word No Do right, they, and they Mango. They do it to the exclusion of the version <laughs> number, right? So they keep calling right. it Mango, even though it's Windows Phone seven five. And so this thing is like Windows Phone seven five something. And but not and okay, it's Tango. No, it's not. It's just. The next version of Windows Phone 7.5. It's like, oh, guys, seriously. Oh, you know, there's <laughs> Tango. <laughs> yeah, so there, and the other confusing thing is um, somebody got a screenshot from ZTE at the uh, Mobile World Congress that showed them displaying Tango 1 and Tango 2. Microsoft definitely doesn't want anybody knowing there's two Tangos, right? But there are. And one of them is for these new low-cost, low-end phones um, that they're going to be launching primarily in the developing world. Uh, the other one is the Tango update that the rest of us are going to get on our phones um, who already have Mango. So mm. that makes it even more confusing. And another reason they're probably not using the words Tango and Mango. You know, my favorite Tango. my favorite question about Tango <laughs> is, so if I install this thing on my phone, is it going to take away half of my RAM and make it work, work more slowly? <laughs> You know, that's, that, that was it's, my it's, question. It's, yeah, and the answer is no. <laughs> <That was> what, <laughs> it, no. Um, but it, why, it is obviously. Why would you that? ever think that? Well, because it's designed to work with these new low-end phones that have less RAM in right. them. Right. So does that mean that it makes your phone functionally retarded, you know, compared to the way it is now? And the answer is no, because if you have the RAM, the system will work It normally, takes advantage right? of it. Okay. It will right. also sense the hardware type and act accordingly. So on these low-end phones... Uh, that have a constrained hardware environment. You know, they turn off certain background processes and other resources, um, and they may ensure that apps take up less uh, less RAM and so forth. So, no, it will act intelligently. I mean, it's not a Commodore 64. It's it's still a fairly sophisticated <laughs> operating system. Well, that's a relief. Although well, no, there's no, some the who would I like was that. More worried, I, I was more worried about, you know, because they said if, you, if you're running Tango on um, a phone, that you won't be able to access certain apps that are very more memory intensive, like Bing Local Scout was one that they used as an example, their own application. And um, mm -hmm. my question was, okay, so if we get Tango, a Tango update on our phones, can, are we going to lose access to some apps? Yeah. Because um, that's know. very confusing too, right? But the answer is well, no. Yeah, Local Scout is unfortunately one of many Windows phone features that work differently or not at all, depending on where you are or where you bought the phone. So um, I'm going to get this wrong off the top of my head. But when I went to France, if I'm not mistaken, and also in London, I think that Local Scout worked. When we were in Spain recently, it did not work. And that's one of those great things about Windows Phone. You never know. So, I mean, I, I would imagine that in these emerging markets, I think there were 23 additional markets they were hitting or whatever it was, that uh, it's probably pretty likely that Local Scout's not going to be available in those markets. Just like other features aren't available, like over-the-air podcast support or... Damn you know. them! Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I yes, uh, 
It's a little strong, Leo, but yes. Yeah, so Damn I, I, their I, eyes. It is, it is a problem. <laughs> you know, fuels. It's a problem. No, but there are things you get if you have a Mango phone and you're going to get this Tango update sometime in the coming months. There, You, you get like some stamps, some features you don't have now. Like, um, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> multimedia. I have a Tango phone, sir. Okay. Could I have a... <laughs> As somebody just said on Twitter, it, but it doesn't it take two to tango? Yes, that's why oh, there's two tangos, I guess, yeah, right? Yes, that's, uh, it. that's the reason. You get lo- there's an Argentina gonna- joke in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Export and manage your contacts to a SIM card. Um, better multimedia attachments, multiple Functionality multiple- from cell phones from 1996, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You get all these things. good things and more. And you're gonna more. Get the- I, I actually get asked fairly frequently about that SIM card functionality. You know, how can I how can I do that? And Windows Phone today will will read contacts if you have them on a SIM, which I suppose is for those people who have upgraded, right? You know, they had a you could take a SIM with you, but the problem is the SIMs don't hold much data, right? Right, I mean. uh, right, of course. And and um, but people like that, and I, I guess I see that. You know, the Microsoft approach with Windows Phone was that you would be syncing the stuff in the cloud. Right. So when you replaced your phone, right, right. you would just type in your address and you get all your stuff. I, I'm that, worried about that. You know, memory on the phone for context in ever in years. But we're talking. But remember who this is targeting, right? right? So right. These, these emerging markets, you may not have good connectivity, right? You have this thing locally uh, that may make sense for those people. So that's that's why that's happening. But it's interesting that we're going to get it, and that will please a few people. But it's really for the emerging markets. God bless them. <laughs> yes. God damn bless them to hell, and God, God bless bless them. those emerging markets. Oh, them. I'm sorry. I thought you meant Microsoft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know who we're damning or praising, but yes. It's damning with faint praise. We're going to take a break. I think we're done with that. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Are we done with that? Yes. We, please tell me we're done. With we're that. done with that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got picks, we've got tips, we've got enterprise and normal. What is the, what is the, what is the, Opposite of enterprise, lack of enter- like the lack of enterprise. Uninter- we have enterprise and unenterprising. Slo- slovenly. Slov- <laughs> we have enterprise and slacker. Yeah. How about that. Uh, <laughs> tips and picks, and uh, we also have a code name pick, which you're going to like. In fact, I think it's very. If it's a very interesting one, um, all that coming up. But first, it would behoove me to pay some bills and mention uh, my new blog host. Yay! Squarespace.com. We've used Squarespace for our uh, company blog, inside.twit.tv, for some time now. Uh, and they're just great. Uh, if, you've, if you haven't visited them, go to squarespace.com uh, and uh, check it out. Actually, you know, the offer code I have to fix here is Windows 3. So let me just... Don't use the... Because we're now in uh, March, are we not? No longer in February. So they put the Windows... The offer code has the month number. In it. Let me just change that. There you go. Windows 3. Uh, but let me tell you what you'd use that for. First, go to squarespace.com and see what I'm talking about. Squarespace.com is the secret behind exceptional websites. Uh, that's, what they, that's what they call themselves. And the idea is you're getting great hosting. I mean, really, truth, truly uh, powerful, awesome, never go down, never insecure hosting. But on top of that... You get software that makes it really easy to, uh, to to make a beautiful site that looks like no other. You notice, by the way, the font right right here. This will give you some idea. See that 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 font at, at Squarespace.com. They're they're giving you access to over 300 web safe fonts. Now, in the past, you know, anybody who's designed websites knew you had to be you know, what it was it Helvetica or or Arial or Trebuchet. There were five or six fonts that you could count on browsers supporting. Well, now they have they uh, support the 300 Google font library, web font library, uh, which means you can really make your site look beautiful. Uh, they have uh, plugins for all the social uh, networks. They have form builders, 13 new template redesigns, 85 style options, two brand new templates. And the best measure of this is to go to the examples page and just look at all the different Squarespace sites. They all look unique and beautiful and modern. And this is why I'm finally getting off WordPress for my personal blog and moving to Squarespace. I decided it was time to stop looking like my site was designed in 1992. 
or maybe a little later, and and have a good looking, beautiful site. There's a new phrase people uh, use. Oh, what is it? Um, it? It's where it adapts to the the size of the screen. You see, nowadays you got people visiting you on mobile devices, tablets, and desktops, and what you want is a screen that will automatically adjust to the size of the display and not give you a different looking site, but automatically adjust to it. And that's exactly what a Squarespace site does. It's really, these, these, these guys have done such an amazing job. Look at the examples to get a sense of it. You will love it. You will love setting it up. And I particularly like the fact that their free trial is about as easy as you can get. All you need is a name for your site, a password and an email address. You don't even need our offer code. Just those three. And you can have everything Squarespace does. No watermark, no limitation for 15 days or actually 14 days. If you want to buy, and the prices are, remember, this is for both hosting and software. And they have capabilities of doing multiple editors and all of that stuff. Even they have this idea called audiences where you can have password protected areas of your site up to three audiences for the advanced and six audiences for the business uh, uh, account, which gives you some very interesting capabilities. It'd be great for an intranet, for instance. Online uh, resources and a special support team with personal help 24-7. And even now, this new thing, they do free live classes. If you go to workshops.squarespace.com, they have free classes um, that will let you... Let me, Type in the URL. It's hard for me to type and talk. Squarespace.com. That will uh, let you get the most out of your Squarespace site. There are class schedules, everything you need to know. You can participate in these things. That is super cool. This is th These guys know how to run a company. So uh, I've asked them uh, if I could be on the beta for version 6 of Squarespace, which is coming out soon, and they said yes. So we'll, we're moving Leoville over there, and I'm just really thrilled about it. I'm so impressed. The more I use it, the more I like it. You try it now, free, squarespace.com. And then if you decide to buy, i got a special deal for you. If you use the offer code Windows 3 that you see at the bottom of the screen there, Windows 3, you'll get 30% off for three months. 30% off for three months. Just use the offer code Windows 3 Squarespace, the secret behind exceptional websites. And I hate doing that ad in front of Paul because he's got My his, website's fine. It's nothing wrong with your website. It's actually Oh, no, Leo, great. there's plenty wrong with my website. But it's the content management system. Uh, you need a more modern one. And I know you struggle with that. Speaking of the Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't you write the original one, though, really? I mean... Yeah, I did, yeah. actually. So you, you have nobody to blame but yourself. But you understand. Well, they, they no, but they don't use that anymore. I, right. The, the one they use now is even worse. I, <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, at least the oh one I did dear. was like custom designed for my needs. That's but. true. It fit your needs, yeah. Well, it, you know, there's a, there's a real... Actually, that's how uh, Squarespace started. Anthony uh, was a student at University of Maryland and wrote a content management system for himself. And it was so successful that he, he grew it. It's in Java. I just want to mention, too, that uh, since you said it earlier, I love the word... Trebuchet. Isn't that a good word? And it's a font. But it's really it's it's also, a, it's also a, ki a killing device. <laughs> it's a you know, it's like a kind of catapult, times. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was a Microsoft code name as well, guys. Really? Believe what it. was it a code name yep. for? I never could find what it was the code name for, I, I think. I never got the code this. name and I never could track it down. Interesting. Interesting. Did it kill anything? I hope anything. it was a killing machine of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trebuchet. So uh, let us get uh, to our picks of the week, Paul Thorat. Uh, okay. Why don't you start with a tip here? Actually, I just have picks this week because I have so many picks. I just wanted to burn through it's them. It's a scratch, not a pick. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a pick every week, or it's a yes, a yes. pick every week. A pick a week. <laughs> and some of the uh, actually, two of them are Windows 8 related. So Microsoft shipped a beta version of something called the Microsoft Device Center, which is not a Metro style app but is a Metro-like app, sort of like the Zoom PC software that runs on the desktop, and it's for managing, right now, Microsoft hardware. I think it might have been Mary Jo Foley, actually, who asked whether this wouldn't be, or if we're not seeing here the beginnings of that Windows Phone app, you know, the, the sync app that they're going to be working on for Windows Phone 8. I think it was Mary Jo. But um, regardless, today it works with Microsoft mice and keyboards, and it works really well. And, you know, if you follow this kind of stuff, you know that Microsoft makes uh, little control panel type 
things for controlling these devices. But actually, this thing works really well to the point where I've actually gone in and done some things I'd never done on a keyboard. For example, one thing I never use on my keyboard is caps lock. And this thing lets you turn that off. Yay. Now, people who know will probably tell me, actually, this was in the control panel thing you never looked at. Maybe it was. But no, no, no. Because, I had to download software to do that. Yeah, this is nice. So this is a... I really like that. A, it's a nice software. So um, I use Microsoft Mice and Keyboard. So there's some great, you can control every single aspect of it through the software. There are app-specific functions for both. So you can have the mouse buttons, for example, function differently in one app than it does in another app than it does like out in the OS in general. Um, very cool stuff. So uh, definitely check that one out if you're running the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Um, very, very cool. Neat. And then the other one just came released uh, just the other day um, is the the one Windows 8 Metro style app I've been really waiting for, which is the Kindle app. Ooh! And um, this is actually a really good one too. Um, it's gonna it's this is gonna be a little hard to explain, but it it has all of the view stuff that you would expect if you use the Kindle app on an iPad, for example. It works much in the way that you would expect. Um, it uses edge UIs though, so you can't you don't really flick it to change the page. You kind of tap on the side of the screen, which is right. fine. Um, but the thing I really like about it, let me see if I can get back to the library, is in the library view, finally, they have sorting that isn't just title and author. They don't have search, which is the thing I really need. But they have, you can search, you can uh, sort by recent as well, which is huge. Because if you have a lot of books in your Kindle right. library like I do. I hate scrolling through that. Yeah, frequently what you're looking for is the book you just bought. And maybe right. it was like the title starts with S or right. the author name starts with P and you like scroll, 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 you know. And now you can just sort by recent and it comes right up to the front. Nice. And uh, like on other devices and on the Kindle itself, you have the cloud view, which is everything in your library. You have the downloaded view, which is the stuff that's on the device itself. Uh, and then and in and sure enough, well, in an in-app link to the Kindle store, which today goes to IE Metro and browses to the Amazon website to the Kindle ebook section. But it is in there. And, uh, you know, you know that Apple doesn't allow that kind of thing on their devices. So that's something you can do um, on Windows 8. So that's very cool as well. Neato. Yeah, it's a nice looking app. It's, you know, it's, it's very I'm downloading nice. it right now. And just because everyone doesn't have Windows 8, I throw it a bone to uh, the three people listening who have Windows phone devices. <laughs> and I just wanted to throw out the fact on. that, not to talk about it for too long, but there is a Google search app that just came out this week for Windows Phone 7.5 in particular. I actually thought they had a Google app previous to this, but uh, this one just came out. And I have to say, you know, while we're throwing rocks at the Windows phone guys, it is amazing to me that I can go to the Windows Phone Marketplace on the device, I can type in Google and not find this app, and then I can type in Google Search and still not find this app. And it's amazing to me. It's in there, but the search on the phone is awful. And I just don't understand why it's so terrible. But I have a link to how you can find it on the web, and you can install it on your phone that way. I've been using Bing in Windows uh, 8 uh, Preview. I like it. Yeah, it's great. But, but you know, some people, there are Google people and. Yeah. With their silly Google needs. You silly Google people, you. <laughs> silly. Well, thank you, Paul. Three good three good picks there. Or scratches. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Enterprise Pick of the Week. And I have to say, when I saw what your pick is, Mary Jo, I thought of the show Eastbound and Down. Because he drives one of these. Denali? The Denali. It's a General Motors vehicle, I believe. Mm. An SUV, mm. yes. Well, yep. Denali, a.k.a. SQL Server 2012, is the pick of the week. And the reason it is the pick of the week is it RTM'd yesterday. Or actually, March 6th. Yep. Uh, two uh, days ago. So, yeah. It's now available to MSDN and TechNet subscribers. And if you're a regular person who needs it, uh, you have to wait till April 1st. No, not not fooling. It really is. April 1st is general availability for this. And SQL Server 2012, um, it's been in development for a few years. Um, it's got more of everything you like in SQL Server, if you like SQL Server. It's got more BI, business intelligence, self-service, and high availability features. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them because it could take all day pretty much to do that. Um, but yeah, it's out. Um, there's a trial version available for free download, too. And uh, d they use the Denali code name um, because that team, SQL Server team, uses national parks as their code name theme. So that's why it was Denali. Ha! Huh, interesting. Yep. Very interesting. And I just found Trebuchet. Yep. I, I did oh, find nice. a little bit. Of, I know. I, I was like, I know I wrote about Trebuchet. Um, Trebuchet 
was something to do with data center services and software at Microsoft. It was huh. one of their code names for that. Uh, when they were doing like uh, the modular data centers and rolling out, um, you know, their plan for how they were going to have host hosting um, of, for, primarily for Azure. So it has uh, something to do with that. Kill, it didn't kill anything. <laughs> so disappointing. No, it didn't kill anything. Nope. They're, I don't know why they use that code name. But, but it could they, launch a sheep 180 <laughs> yards. Exactly. Maybe they wanted to launch something over and lob it at Amazon across the <laughs> pond. Just a it's, a, it's such a good word. I just love it. I it agree. Is. Yeah. yeah and it's a great font. It's my, one of my favorite Microsoft fonts. <laughs> but that's not the code name of the week. No. What is the code name of the week? Codename of the Week is something I think Leo is going to like a lot. Um, so Microsoft has this week on campus their Tech Fest, which is their research fair for Microsoft Research. That's such a good event. It is. And um, one of the things they, sh they are letting people download and try is called Cliplets. Cliplets. And um, what it does is it lets you take some of your shaky video uh, that, you, that you take and isolate out a particular part of it oh. and use it... Uh, it, like to supplement your still photography. It's kind of oh. hard to explain this. Um, but if you go to the Microsoft research site, they've got a picture of a girl blowing out a birthday candle. And so you can um, just highlight the candles going out and coming back. It's like a, you see a photo, um, but you can uh, basically turn it into something dynamic just around the candles. So it's pretty interesting. Um, it's like something between still and dynamic imagery. Um, so it's kind of cool. I, 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 so it takes a picture and it makes it come uh, come alive, kind of move. Yeah, basically. Interesting. Yep. I have yeah. an app that I downloaded. Here's the guy uh, demonstrating it, <laughs> Neil Joshi. <laughs> it's Bryant. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, I have an app that uh, on the I think on the iPhone that that will uh, let you take a little video and then you select the part of the video that you want to have animated and it will animate it. Is this sort of like that? Yeah. I don't think it works on the phone um, yet, but I saw a ton of people when they saw it saying, oh, please make this a Windows phone app. This would huh. be super cool. Um, huh. So you see on the left-hand side, they've got a picture of a fountain there right. um, and where the just the moving. water is running. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then, so it's, it's kind of cool. And then so he's going to highlight that and take yep. it, you make it still. Apart. Yeah. And just the water's running. And just the water's yep. running. It's kind of It's kind of fun. Yeah. This will be amazing when Apple releases it as part of the iPhone 5 last exactly. year, next year. Well, I, no one know, even I, this is what stuff. puzzles me, is it is, in fact, an iPhone app that's been out for quite some time now. But I guess Microsoft <laughs> Research probably thought of it first. Um, interesting. I'm trying to find the uh, name of the program. Uh, I have so many camera apps on here. But uh, it lets you... Is it Kinotopic? Yeah. Yeah, it's Kinotopic. So it does exactly that on the iPhone. Okay. It is. It's a neat effect. I'm not, not any way to deprecate what you're. No, oh, no. What you're saying. I'm just. Uh, it's interesting. Um, in fact, I, I'll show you because I did it once with my, me drinking a beer. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, and then so what it does is uh, is uh, only my Adam's apple moved in the beer. Oh, oh weird. <laughs> so it looked like I was drinking it forever. <laughs> That's what it feels you like were. when you're drinking Bud. <laughs> it probably was Bud. Uh, let me see if I can. It just... wasn't one of my home brews. I can. No, say. it wasn't. It wasn't. What was it? B Billings. That's the new yes, one. Yes, and the latest one is no. The latest one is Cairo. Codename Cairo. Cairo. Oh. It's up to see. Just to bring back a good Microsoft code name that they they needed to resurrect. <laughs> Cairo. Cairo's not Boston, Mary Jo. <laughs> no, Cairo is not Boston. Sorry, Paul. Uh, well, you could have used Coventry, Rhode Island, but no, she went with the, the Egypt Well, shines. my next one is going to be a D code name, so maybe Dedham is in the run. Dedham is in the in the works. I'm not sure if you want the the word dead in, in a beer name. But. <laughs> or ham. Dead or ham. Or, Both of those probably right, don't right. belong in beer. Uh, it's a good hammy beer. Yeah, it's got a nice hammy, <laughs> a nice hammy flavor. Ah, uh, Yum. Mary Jo Foley writes uh, all about Microsoft on a blog of the same name, allaboutmicrosoft.com. It's really a ZDNet blog, and it is an absolute must-read. Put it in your uh, in your folder, your RSS feed, so that you can keep up with what's going on in the in the wonderful world of Microsoft. Allaboutmicrosoft.com. Our most recent post: What's what's it like building apps for Windows 8? 
Um, good stuff. Really great stuff. Uh, Paul Therott, also, he's, he's got his own blog, too, at the window, windsupersite.com, the super site for Windows. And uh, many of the things we talk about on this show appear on either Mary Jo or Paul's uh, blog. So if you want to know more, you can always go there to find more. He's also the author of Windows Phone Secrets. And yes, and yes, Windows 8 Secrets is in the works. It's official, ladies and gentlemen. It's true. Thank you guys uh, for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back uh, right here at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern next Thursday to talk about uh, Windows. Um, that's uh, 1900. Actually, I guess Daylight Savings is coming. I can't remember when. Yeah. I think it is this weekend. Is it this yeah. weekend? So then it'll be uh, 1800 UTC at uh, twit.tv. But, you know, even if you miss the show, it, you can always get audio and video versions from any podcatcher. The Zoom Market... Pl- oh, I'm sorry. What do they call it? The Zoom Music... The Music Market... <laughs> What do they call it now? It's changing all the time, Leo. You know, Google it's... did that yesterday. They changed the Android market yeah. to play.google.com. Yeah. It's like, what? Anyway. I, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, iTunes, all of those places. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, uh, Mary Jo. And we'll Thank see you. you next time on Windows Weekly.